Dear colleagues, uh, it's a pleasure today to be with uh, Professor Alberto Briganti from uh, San Rafael Hospital in Milan to discuss patients that are negative at conventional imaging, so CN0, IM0, and uh, are found with positive nodes after radical prostatectomy and uh, pelvic lymphadenectomy. So the only randomized trial in this setting has been published uh, several years ago from uh, uh, Edward Messing and, uh, and colleagues and showed there were benefit of androgen deprivation therapy in terms of survival in this category of patient. However, this trial had several limitations, um, including and starting from the fact that it was the acquiral of patient was performed before the PSA era. These patients now constitute more or less 5 to 10 percent of um, patients that are treated with radical prostatectomy, so the category is uh, quite frequent, I would say. Many uh, new papers were published on the subject. Um, so the first question for Professor Briganti would be, how would you prefer to manage this, uh, this patient? What would you say and how would you prefer to, to manage them than, than when they come to you with these results? So this, is, uh, as you said, uh, it's kind of frequent clinical scenario when we operate on patients with high-risk prostate cancer. Indeed, up to 25% of patients who are staged negative prior to surgery, they end up in having positive lymph node at microscopic evaluation. So the real question is indeed how to manage these patients after surgery. And there are indeed open questions because this has been a kind of understudied patient population over the last years with many trials published in terms of uh, combination therapy after surgery, all of them virtually excluding patients with node positive disease after radical prostatectomy. So we are in a, in a setting where there is a lack of strong evidence except for the study that we were mentioning about the role of adjuvant ADT in these patients. But as we all know, this is a small, old study which might not be applicable to contemporary patients. So I think that is key for the evaluation of uh, the correct management of these patients to assess pathological features like uh, local disease status, Gleason score, and number of positive lymph nodes that are retrieved during extended pelvic lymph node dissection. And these must be combined also with post-operative PSA, which uh, uh, ideally should be undetectable after surgery. And indeed, if we apply the guidelines, in a case of patients with undetectable PSA, we have different options for these patients. One might be to apply ADT, but these might be over treatment in some of these patients who might indeed fare quite well, even without any post-operative adjuvant therapy. The second option would be indeed to apply radiation therapy in combination with ADT, and there is also like lack of strong data on the optimal duration of ADT in this setting. And radiation therapy has been proven to be efficacious in terms of cancer control outcomes, however based again on uh, nice, large, but still retrospective studies. And the third option would be just to observe these patients. And again, if patients have one to, positive, one to two positive lymph nodes, negative PSA, after a surgery in terms of undetectable PSA, well, these patients might be easily observed and eventually uh, treated with early salvage approaches in case of recurrence. Thank you. So the second question, um, um, with an uh, with ongoing uh, um, number of published studies, we now know there are all these, uh, these options ab available depending on the risk certification and, and that is more a multifaceted rather than a single uh, category of, uh, of patient. Uh, so a very nice uh, work uh, has been performed by, by your group uh, and was published on the JCO some years ago that has done a, a, a tree nomogram to, 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 to choose what could be the preferred management of one, or, or, um, of one patient compared to other, depending on, on the number of nodes and another characteristic, including Gleason score. Uh, but in this study, um, um, there was no uh, observation as a, as an option. So um, the second question would be more specifically, which patient would you would you observe, and what are your specific thoughts 
um, for adjuvant versus early savage radiotherapy in this category of patient, also based on the recent result of the artistic meta-analysis in which notably PN positive patients were, were not included? Yes, the, the, this is a great question. So the option to observe patients with positive lymph nodes indeed is there uh, for patients with small involvement in the lymph nodes and undetectable PSA as, I, as, well, as well I was mentioning. And uh, this is derived from previous observational series, mainly coming from uh, the Sloan Kentary Cancer Center, but also from the historical group of patients treated in burn. And node positive patients were simply observed over time. And you see that up to 20% of those patients with one to two positive lymph nodes, despite having nodal involvement, did not even recur at long-term follow-up. So basically, I think that the best category to be observed and to eventually be treated with salvage approaches are those with one to two positive lymph nodes and undetectable PSA after surgery. Now, what to do with early salvage? As you were saying, those Three trials that apply the concept of adjuvant versus early cell radiation therapy, all of them virtually excluded patients with not positive disease. So we still do not know the benefit in terms of prospecting randomized evidence of early salvage in this patient group. But we have nice, again, retrospective evidence published recently on Journal of Clinical Oncology, but other series that did the same, in which, indeed, early salvage radiation therapy might be efficacious in this setting as well, with the idea of maximizing local control. And it seems, indeed, that uh, uh, early salvage radiation therapy might uh, be um, um, beneficial, especially especially at very low PSA level. So we should, we should also, in a way, uh, run away from the cutoff of, of biochemical recurrence, which is what the guidelines also state. Whenever you see the first increase in PSA, especially in patients with adverse features like those with not positive disease, if these patients are like M0 at imaging, well, uh, salvagation therapy together with ADT is indeed an extremely valuable, valuable option with a possible curative treatment intent. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, so we also ran uh, recently uh, uh, an interview uh, to, to European urologists uh, for, for this specific setting. And what another thing that emerged, which is emerging in all prostate cancer paradigm, of course, is the role of, of PSMA. And the, the results of the studies uh, that have been published, for the vast majority, I would say perhaps all of them, do not include patients that were staged with PSMA, uh, with PSMA before undergoing surgery. Um, so in this specific setting, the last question would be, what do you think about the implementation of PSMA and how this may impact uh, on the management uh, of this patient, meaning some will be not positive after a negative PSMA, whereas other will present with a positive PSMA scan on the nodes before surgery. What's, what is your opinion on this and how would you, would you manage this patient with preoperative PSMA? Well, now the situation is getting even more complicated, as you were saying, because we can pick up patients with negative imaging but positive lymph nodes at functional imaging, so at PSMA PET, and what to do with these patients. And this is a burning question for clinical uh, practitioners, and because we actually uh, do um, PSMA PET more and more often in the preoperative setting. So the real message that we should give and that we should keep, uh, I think, is that we should not under-treat the primary or under-treat the pelvis in presence of uh, negative conventional imaging and positive functional imaging, because many of these patients uh, indeed might have been included, for example, in previous trials that tested the role of primary therapy, of primary treatment for localized disease. And uh, uh, while we don't have strong evidence to support what I'm saying, uh, the role of primary therapy in the setting on CN1 disease uh, and, and negative conventional imaging what but positive functional imaging is there. Now, the matter is what to do in terms of which treatment. And uh, as we all know, um, uh, we have lower evidence to use surgery in that setting as compared to radiation therapy plus intensification treatments with, for example, ADT plus abiraterone. 
although those patients were staged with conventional imaging. But still, uh, surgery might play a role in the setting of uh, multimodal treatments. But we should counsel our patients correctly and, uh, and I believe uh, uh, include in patients who are fit with uh, enough life expectancy treatment of the primary and then uh, correctly counsel them in terms of data available, radiation therapy plus ADT plus eventually abiraterone versus surgery plus or minus adjuvant therapies. Perfect. So you would suggest to still manage them uh, uh, likely with surgery, but of course to, 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 to do also a proper nodal staging, but at the same time to counsel them on the, on the likelihood of the need of a multimodal, multimodal approach and the data we have, although based on conventional imaging. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much. It was thank a you. pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.